Today in the Smuggler's Room, we do some seriously low budget green screen and teleportation. That's coming up. You want some geeks? I'm Brian and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is going to show you how we built our teleportation device, aka the secret sci fi prop. We got this idea when I saw this vintage trunk on Amazon and picked it up, remembering that I had three of these really weird cylinder heat sinks that I thought would look really good inside. At least, I think these were heat sinks. They did have LEDs in them, so if you know what they are, Please put that in the comments below. Either way, the combination of both of these seem like the perfect sci-fi prop. I pictured our hero in the 1940s running down a dark alley, being chased by a secret government agency. He turns the corner, he pops open the case, flips the switch, and boom, teleports himself to somewhere else, leaving behind only a pile of glowing blue ashes. Yep, I know, a lot of coffee, super excited today. Let's see how we built it. I knew I wanted the three cylinders to be the focus of the prop, so I arranged them on a piece of quarter inch MDF, and after measuring their location, I cut three holes. These three holes would later allow them to recess down into the device. Then I went to work adding additional details from my Greebly bins, parts that I had that had that perfect, unrecognizable sci-fi look. The one thing I really wanted was a pair of glowing tubes, mostly because they look cool. So I used this braided clear tubing that I found at Home Depot. I also wanted something for the upper panel, and I had an old cover from a computer in one of my bins, and it was a perfect fit for the lid. Now, we're gonna need to dress this cover up a bit. I want a digital display with some lighting, as well as some other little tiny bits and pieces, but we'll get to that later. Now, this device needs to look worn out. And to do that, we went back to our old friend, liquid latex. I applied it to all the corners that I wanted worn, but we did something else with this as well. The base layer was silver, then the latex, then the layer of gray, followed by more latex, and finally our rust color. This multi-layer technique will allow you to reveal dual colors worn away underneath. That way you get a really great effect when you peel or wipe away the latex or whatever type of masking agent you choose to use. Next, we moved on to the heat sinks and we took them apart. At one time, these had LEDs inside, but they no longer work. That doesn't matter anyway. We want both blue and red LEDs installed. I used a little CA glue to hold the LED in place and then hot glue to secure them better. Now, overall, I used hot glue as a source of adhesion for this thinking that later it would be easy to peel that away and remove the LEDs if I want to replace them with a different color. Now, I might 3D print an actual housing for the LEDs and put that in place as a better mode to hold them, but for right now, I'm in a hurry. I also rigged up a way to attach the clear tubes to the strange parts I found to install on our device, and then we added blue LEDs to both tubes securing them with hot glue, and then finally testing them with a nine volt battery. The blue glow is exactly what I was looking for. We assembled a quick base, mainly out of plywood and scrap MDF. This would allow space to store the electronics, the wiring, and the battery for the prop. Once our base was completed, we went ahead and assembled all the parts that we had worked on to this point. I made a point of bolting as many things in place as possible. Attaching things mechanically takes longer, but it really gives you more flexibility in the future if you need to change or work on something. And of 
course, we had to test the lighting and make sure our prop fit inside our box. Now let's talk about how our character would interact with our device. We know they flip a switch, but to me, I was thinking that they needed something else, maybe in their hand. Now, a little while back, our friend Jay sent us a Greebly care package. Thank you very much for the Greeblies, Jay. And in this package was this camera flash holder. And this awesome little piece seemed perfect for what I needed. I took apart the top section so we could modify it, as well as epoxied a rare earth magnet to the back. Then we found some bits and parts to attach to the top of the device and finished it with a red LED cover and some flex tubing at the bottom that will connect to the box. We also wired up a red LED that I purposely left some of the wire exposed because I think that great sci-fi props often leave a bit of their guts exposed. And I like sci-fi guts. For the inside of the lid of the box, I use some of this cool black carbon fiber vinyl. It's great stuff to work with and has an incredible look when the light catches it. Now on the lid, we also need to add details to the computer cover that we're using. One item specific is a laser cut plexiglass designed by a friend of mine. I wanted to install this as sort of a digital display with blue LEDs behind it. And beyond that, some other bits and parts to finish off the look of the device. We now drill some holes in the base unit to attach the wiring from the lid and assemble all of our finished parts. Next, we do a little programming for our Arduino to add a little animation and life to the LEDs. I love the look of old luggage that has an assortment of travel stickers plastered all over them. And I found some vintage-ish looking stickers on Amazon that I thought would add a nice touch to the entire case and I applied them. And speaking of stickers, I also wanted to add some fun labels on the inside of the box, on the device. Maybe they have strange instructions in different languages. And of course, a logo for the type of device that it is. Now geeks, that's how we build a teleportation device. So the next time you're stuck in an alternate dimension or in a dark alley with some strange secret agents, we'll grab yourself the face frame of an old computer, three of your favorite heat sink power cells, and an old suitcase to build something out of nothing. Today in the Smuggler's Room, we do some seriously low budget green screen and teleportation. <laughs>